Meanwhile, for the Niners, we check out their numbers on the ground as they'll try to keep the momentum going into the second half. set to go to begin quarter number three and I think you'd have to say their coaching staff all things considered had to be pleased with their performance in the first half of this Super Bowl definitely pleased doing their best not to show it to their team of course because as you and I both know their mantra all season long has been finish get the job done they know how close they are to lifting that trophy one more solid half of football and they can do exactly that They'll run on first down. Craig, and some room for him there as he'll take this up to about the 15. They give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. In the first half, he was held in check on the ground, but despite that lack of production, they still have the lead. Yeah, and they've got to feel fortunate about that. If they could actually get production from their lead horse, that would help open up this offense and widen this margin, too. Coming up on a second and six. Shotgun. Here's Montana. He finds his man complete. It's Craig. And out of bounds across the 15-yard line. And just three yards on the catch there. He couldn't get away. And all of a sudden here, it's third down. He'll look to throw. And that is incomplete. Oh, he had a defender right there with him to force that to the ground. And fourth down now coming up. He did a fine job there of not hitting him before the ball arrived. And I've got to tell you, you can often mistime that play because of the angles of approach. When you're going to get him, sometimes you panic as well and think, I've got to be there right now. Instead, in this case, timed it perfectly and knocked it free. And a fair catch taken here right at about the 40-yard line. 37 yards on the punt with no return. And it'll be Dolphin football. Now we take a glance at the offense as they work their way back out for their first possession of the second half. And their defense did its job by forcing the punt to start things out. And now, Charles, can the offense get in gear? I think, partner, you can sense them saying, OK, the first half was theirs, but now let's get the momentum back on our side. We forced a punt. Now let's go downfield and score. If we do that, we'll be set up well for the second half. Good starting field position for them here as they come up first and 10 at the 40. They go play action now. Marino. And he will find his man on the end wrap. Complete. And they're working across midfield inside the 45. Oh, that was a pretty route right there because it's all about finding a window on a route like that. He lined up on his left. Ran the deep in route over the middle, and the ball was right where it needed to be. Really good trust between quarterback and receiver. Really good completion. And to give this time to the tailback. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. They know that old expression, it's not my night. It hasn't been his so far. I don't know if the legs are a little bit heavy. Sometimes having to hang out all day and play doesn't exactly play to your advantage, but it's been a tough go for him. Every time he looks up, somebody's there defensively. That was the same case on that play. The run only got a yard. Here's second and nine. And he'll give it here to his running back. 
Call it a gain of five that time, and they'll be left with a third and about four. Frustrating for a defense, energizing for an offense. Finding a way to create that type of yardage in your running game, that'll make the guys carrying the ball very, very happy. Now Marino. And yeah, this pass broken up. Excellent coverage there on third down as that was not an easy one to hold on to. We saw this a lot in the first half, and it continues. These receivers just not able to get much separation. So that means they have to win the 50-50 balls. They've got to go up with the defender and find a way to start coming down with them. And this time, contact and another incomplete pass. for the second time tonight this field goal unit comes out here this officially a 55 yard attempt and he has got it from 55 yards away that was never in down so a good kick there they put the bow tie on it with three points and let's face it everybody wants a touchdown we know that but the nfl defense is awfully good you're not going to score each and every time be able to knock the ball through the post and take the throw. By the way, I said bow tie. I meant just bow. Either about the top, but yeah. Either way. You got it. I just went right past it. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. Take it in at the three. And good coverage there on special teams as he'll get him down shy of the 20. San Francisco's offense returns to the field and a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now with a game this close, you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. So here's a first and 10 now down inside the 20. Now a give right side. It's Craig, and he'll be taken down at the 20 after a gain of just one. You know, it's not just all athleticism from defensive linemen. Let's give them a little credit for their football intelligence as well. Read and react by them, understood the play call, and stacked it up and stuffed the run. Inside four minutes to go, third quarter. They'll keep it on the ground. Craig gets this to the 24 for a gain of four. Well, you certainly have to give a little credit here because they're playing this game now at their pace. This is ball control football, sustained runs, taking their time and making it work. The Dolphins bring on an extra defensive back on third down. They're going to look to throw. Open man is Taylor. He's got it. And he's going to have a Niners first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. If you're going to blitz, likely going to leave you in man coverage with this guy, and that is less than ideal. It is because just about any offense that has an elite receiver, if you blitz and have him in man coverage, you're going to him even if he has an elite defender on him because he usually knows where the ball is before the defender does. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Oh, well, he's got some breathing room. And able to rip off a big chunk of yardage before being dropped inside the 40. A good pick up there, 26 yards. Just a simple tap pass, but it pays off in a big way. And sometimes the simple stuff causes the most problems for a defense because there's a breakdown in communication there. When that receiver goes behind the line of scrimmage and it looks like he's going in motion, someone either has to go with him or he has to be passed off to another defender. Somehow they didn't get that communicated well, and it turned into a nice play. 
And he's going to get this inside the 30. 45 yards rushing for him now as he's run it 11 times. First downs have now come easy, and neither have runs like this throughout this game. Absolutely not. He finally felt like, whoa, a sigh of relief. We got something going in the running game. It's Montana. Over the middle, that's caught by Rice. And they've got it inside the 10 at the 8. Great mix of play calling so far. Three runs, three passes. All three passes have been completions. First and goal. I think on defense now, you have to almost take a chance. Rely on your scouting. Pick a play you think they would run here and just load up for it and see what happens. out of the gun. Here's Montana. Over the middle complete. That's Craig. They'll get this halfway home from the 8 to the 4 on a gain of 4. Well, offensively, that's the mismatch that you want. You want to force a linebacker to try and cover your back out of the backfield out in some open space. The linebackers nowadays, they run like backs and they take a lot of pride in covering. What a nice play he made there in the open field. On second down now, it's Craig, and they'll be driven back here, losing yardage to the nine. That's going to go down as a loss of five, and it brings up third down. And goal to goal runs, and you create lost yardage plays. The only way that happens is either called pressure or what I like to call straight ahead pursuit. A great read, and they get to the backfield and make the play. And that was a big chunk of yardage lost. This will be play number eight on the drive. It's third and goal. Now back to throw. And he hauls it in in the end zone. Touchdown, San Francisco. A great effort there. His second touchdown of this Super Bowl. And the Niners will extend their third quarter lead here in this Super Bowl. Now goal for the extra point. It's good, and now it's an 11-point lead, 17 to 6. So that drive, 80 yards, nine plays, and it's polished off by a touchdown for San Francisco. to get points on the board last time. They had to hit a really long field goal to do so. The kickers in today's game are so good and so skilled and hit from distances that we almost start to take them for granted. And we can't do that. That's a long field goal that they got three points out of. They've got to feel good about that. And they've got to make sure they let him up because he's up the mountain. Yeah, now we'll see if that offense can put six on the board. We'll see. A 
a big hitter to start the drive has him up near midfield here for first and ten. Marino sets up. He'll let this go for the end zone. And that's going to wind up incomplete. However, we do have a flag down. Let's check in with our referee. So a costly penalty yardage-wise as that'll move the football down to the spot of the foul. And what the officials are looking for in these situations, whether you're playing the man or the ball. And if you're playing the man, you get a lot less leeway in terms of what's going to happen at the end of the play. But if you're looking for the football, it's less likely to draw the flag. They'll try and run for it on first and goal. And he'll take this into the end zone for a Dolphins touchdown. Punching it in from a yard away. And the Dolphins have made it a one-score game again here in the fourth. So the toss play effective even down here near the goal line. Yeah, and you're hoping the defense can miss too many men to stop the run in the middle of the field and that your blockers can gain a little bit of an advantage. And when they do, foot race to the pylon. And this time, he had the speed to win that race. So now a big play here as the Dolphins will go for the two. They'll try and throw for it. And this is caught. They got it. And that could be an important two points. It gets them back within a field goal. I guess the coach looked at the two-point cheat sheet, said go for it, get it to a three-point game, and they did it. Yeah, and sometimes you just throw out time of game. You don't worry about that. There's just a feel sometimes in making that call. And he felt good about what he had for a two-point conversion. And now they're only down three and feeling great about themselves. kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. Taking it about the run. And he'll get it up past the 20 to about the 22. The Niners set to take over on offense. And the tension ratcheting up all around. A one-score game, fourth quarter of the Super Bowl. This is what you folks came for. Every play with the potential to win or lose a title as they look to drain some time off this clock. They go play action with Montana. That'll be caught by Rice. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. A big play that time through the air. 30 yards. Every defensive staff harps on limiting explosive plays. <laughs> Job not so well done there. Yeah, they talk about it all the time. A lot harder to stop, though, isn't it? And when you think of an explosive play, most offensive staffs define them as passes of 20 or more yards and runs of 15 or more yards. They went zooming past that number there. On first down, it's Craig, and he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. They'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. Run looks there defensively, something we might see more of here in the I think we'll see a lot of it, and, and the difference between that and a pass blitz, pass blitz, you're just trying to get to the quarterback. You're trying to scheme someone open who will get to the QB and make sure he gets on the ground. In a run blitz, you're actually trying to cover up gaps, trying to cover up holes so they can't run the football. They'll keep it on the ground. Craig. And he'll get this down only to about the 46. After getting stuffed on first down, not much better there. Two-yard gain. I like a guy who understands the situation. I also like a guy who, who you look at him and you say, that looks like a guy who knows the coach is going to say, guess what? You drop this one, you'll be carrying around the training facility for an entire week. <laughs> Maybe flashback to high school or college, carrying <laughs> it around campus, right? Maybe the old gauntlet drill, right? Anyone get the ball out while he's, while he's sitting in class and bring it back to the coach? He's in big trouble. Hit as he throws there, incomplete. Oh, that's got to frustrate him a little bit because it nearly got to him there, and it would have been the first sack of the game instead. 
They have an influence to release, and they did force the incomplete pass. Here comes the 49ers punter now, as he'll kick it away for the second time. And no return here. Where will they spot it? Let's go, they go. say just outside the 20-yard line. Miami set to take over. And this could become a career-defining drive for some. Down three. Fourth quarter of the Super Bowl. This is where the legends are made in the National Football League as they begin this drive first and ten. seven out of this before being taken down at the 27. Well, no matter how they phrase it, staying on schedule, staying ahead of the sticks, whatever you want to call it, seven yards on first down, that fits the bill. Three yards remain for second down. <laughs> to throw is Moreno. He's going to let this one go deep. And that's caught inside the 35. And he gets all the way down to the 30-yard line. It's a big play there for Miami. That could very well be a defining play in this game. A touchdown, that gives them the lead, and they took a major step towards getting there with that big play right there. So the big play has him all the way down to the 30 now for first and 10. Play fake. Here's Marino. And he's going to go down. They get to him back at the 40. That will set him back nearly 10 yards here on first down of the sack. Second sack of the game, and that puts him in some pretty good company. 17 guys have had two sacks in the previous 52 Super Bowls, but only three have had the record number of three sacks in this game. And we've got the list here. If he gets another one and everyone behaves nicely, we might just list those out for him. And to give this time to the tailback. Oh, no, he lost the football. And now this is scooped up by the 49ers. And they will set up shop at their own 46-yard line. He has been a workhorse for them in this game. And ball security hasn't been an issue until that point. Yeah, and let's face it. When he's going to carry the ball that many times, he becomes more and more of a target for the defense, knowing that he's going to be the primary guy. They'll just send more and more players towards him, trying to make sure they knock the ball free. Good starting field position for the 49ers as they have it first and 10 at their own 46. Here's Montana to throw. And it's complete over the middle to Clark. And they get to him after a gain of seven to the 47. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made a nice easy pitch and catch. Hoping he can break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. Clock continuing to run. They'll probably wind this all the way before snapping it on second down. They'll try and run some clock here as they keep it on the ground. And this won't be enough to pick up the first. A gain of two, third and one. I like that run right there, partner. Not the flashiest run, not the one that's going to break for big yardage, but he understands the situation. And taking care of the football, paramount, and he got it done. Nursing that slim lead, you're exactly right. Hold on to that ball. Three points separating these two sides with two minutes left to go in the fourth. So it's 49er football here as we get you reset. 
They're facing a critical third down now as they try to hold on to this lead. They'll keep it on the ground. Craig. And he's going to run into a brick wall right in the middle of the field, and I don't think he got there. And now we'll see a timeout used on defense as they stop it right out of the break with 1.57 to go in the ballgame. Here comes the 49ers punter now as he'll come on to kick this one away. And you can't do it much better than that. This ball kicks out of bounds at the 40-yard line. You need to get the ball away here in the fourth quarter while you just hold a slim lead. But that punt, absolutely ideal. They pin them inside the five-yard line. They give their defense a really nice opportunity. at the line ready for their next drive and last time the turnover on the fumble and they were in enemy territory so that had to be very frustrating down on the scoreboard here can't do it again you nailed every part of what was frustrating <laughs> down on the scoreboard get a drive going they pushed it past the 50 yard line so they thought they were in striking distance and to come away with nothing not a good feeling at all, to put it mildly. Now they can't afford to do that again. Yeah, now can they get that bad taste out of their mouth here? Four yards remain for second down. Throwing here, Marino. And he's got his man in stride, complete. And he's brought down, but not before they get it across the 20-yard line. Well, they have had no answer to this connection all night long. They just have to think in a two-minute situation, that's got to be a concentration lap. You know they're going to go back to him with the game that he's been having. Now it's Marino. He finds his man complete. That's Clayton. And he'll have this past the 30 prior to going out of bounds. That's what they need right now. Get the first down, get out of bounds, stop the clock. Just playing smart football, understanding the situation, making the plays necessary, and making sure that clock stops at every opportunity. Marino to throw. And he can't get a throw away. He's taken down. It'll be a loss of 10. And it'll bring up second. Boy, Charles, that time he took a bad situation and made it worse. Yeah, you're almost putting together a nice little song there, aren't you? Because it's something you'll see from young quarterbacks. They have that tendency to retreat backwards instead of stepping up in the pocket. Marino's second down throw incomplete. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Here's Marino. He finds his man complete. That's Clayton. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. The Dolphins going to take their second timeout as they'll stop it with a little over 30 ticks to go in the football game. Timeouts. 
as he'll stop it with 11 seconds remaining in the ball game. So now they're going to send out the field goal unit to, as they say, fire away from long distance. The 49ers now are going to use the first of their timeouts. That'll leave them with two remaining. We'll be back after this. So coming on now is the field goal unit. They're going to try for three, and he'll need all the leg he's got here. This to potentially send us to overtime. And I tell you what, he got it from 58. That had lots of leg behind it. We've seen some big kicks in the NFL the last few years, and that one might just rank right up there. And you know you can hear the crowd react, right? But I was focused in on the sideline and watched them absolutely erupt. I don't know how many of them thought that he was actually going to make that kick, but how about how they felt when the ball went over the post. away fielded just outside the goal line and he'll be tackled just shy of the 25 same as they would be in the regular season. That's exactly right, Brandon. Remember, the receiving team, if they score a touchdown, game is over. But if they kick a field goal or don't score, the other team gets a chance to get the football. They get a possession. If they go down and score, they win the football game at that point. If both teams kick field goals, we keep playing. If a defense scores, let's say the receiving team gets the ball, doesn't score, or they throw a pick six or fumble, gets picked up, the defense scores, game over. But here's the best part. In a regular season, only one period is played. We could call it a tie. Here, we're going to play until we have a winner. And yeah, they will play it safe here and bring this one out to the 25. at the line ready for their next drive they control their own destiny here they have the football in overtime obviously a touchdown would win it and i think teams around the league are still adjusting to the idea of going downfield scoring a touchdown wins the game because they were used to just going downfield and trying to get in field goal range to win a game still having to make that transition let's face it now the ones who are doing it best know they need to go down attack put the ball in the end zone and not leave it up to a field goal and give the other team a chance yeah, as we said they control their own destiny now first throw in overtime now for Marino and the ball is knocked out and now this is scooped up by the 49ers and his guys are going to get the football at the 37 yard line Costly, costly mistake. Coaches talk so much about ball security, and in overtime, so paramount. Do you ever wonder if maybe they talk about it too much? It doesn't seem like you can, but maybe by discussing it time and time again, and you know they overemphasized it here, it almost became self-fulfilling. And any points beat them here. Field goal or a touchdown now. A lot 
of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. And he'll give it here to his running back. And tough sledding. He'll get maybe a yard. Stop short of the 35. Yeah, things were pretty stacked up there in the middle of the line. A lot of bodies, not much space. I think ultimately, he was fortunate to get anything out of that run. They'll keep it on the ground. It's Craig. Two runs in a row, but only two yards to show for. Absolutely love the effort there. The ability to flow from his inside spot and stop that one at the line of scrimmage. Nice linebacker play. So third down now. They need the 27-yard line for a first. They will look to throw. Montana. Oh, and it's intercepted. Picked off near the 26. And the Dolphins are going to have it with a chance to win the game here in overtime. So we will see yet another drive in this overtime. For whatever reason, neither team able to finish this game off. I know that the first thought is, does anyone really want to win it? But I think that they both desperately want to win it, and sometimes you force things, and that leads to errors. Well, it's out there for the taking. We'll see who can do it. Miami's offense set and ready to go. And a fumble last time. Ball security. Talk about it all the time in the National Football League. They've got to be better at it on this drive. Don't you think that when every team gets together for the first time, I don't care if it's OTAs, mini camps, first and first day of camp in the regular season, ball security comes up about what, the second sentence of the coach's yeah. address? And those are so many drills focus on that. All the time, and they do drills to make it even tougher to simulate game situations. Doesn't always work out, though. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. I know exactly what's going to be said about that play from the defensive perspective. What's that? That's why I tell all you guys we need more than one tackler to the ball. He broke the first tackle. Luckily enough, there are more people there to get him down. They go play action with Marino. He's going to air one out. And the defense loses him. It's complete. And they'll have it in the red zone before he crosses over out of bounds. A big play there for the Dolphins. Explosion plays always break the back of a defense. And over time to put him in the red zone, that was huge. I like your description there because when you get an explosion play, now people are really scrambling on defense. Now they're looking at each other. Who's going to step up? Who's going to make a play? Offensive guys have the momentum. Now they're in the red zone. They've got to be thinking attack trying to get it into the end zone. And the 49ers going to take another timeout. They'll be left with just one remaining here at OT. And now it all rests on the right foot of their kicker. This undoubtedly the biggest kick of his life. And his kick is good! The field goal is through the uprights, and they've won the Super Bowl! So the turnover leads to points as they add three there. Yeah, what a sequence there, and a nice win for them. They force the interception, put together a little drive, and then come away with three points. Nothing to it, partner. Just do it. And the Lombardi Trophy has a home in South Florida. The Miami Dolphins are your Super Bowl champions. For the victors getting to hoist that Lombardi trophy, you know, we've talked to guys that have done it, and they say there's no better feeling in sports. I don't know how there can be. The, the, the journey to get to this game is incredible. And then to finally break through and win it when all eyes are on this game alone because there's nothing else going on, that's just got to be absolutely amazing. That The task, incredible. But the accomplishment, forever.